All right, the Friday Night Blitz, week four. The Skiza schools with a jump start on the public schools who are scheduled to kick off the season next week. Now, our game of the week tonight, a pair of undefeated schools. Orangeburg Prep hosting Hilton Head Christian. Andy Palmer and his Indians looking to go 3-0 on the season. Taking on those Eagles from the home of the RBC Heritage, presented by Boeing. Opening drive for the Eagles, and it's John Patrick Produzzi on the keeper. And he gets into the end zone, and he knows where the camera is. And the visitors are up 7-0. Orangeburg Prep responds. McCullough Mims keeps it and watch the vision as he makes some nice cuts. And he will take it in from 41 yards out. And we're tied at 7. Now it's 14-7 Hilton Head. Christian Jace Blackshear goes up top to Blaine McClure. And that makes it 21-7 Eagles in the second quarter. Orangeburg Prep needing to get something going. Third quarter, same score. Dylan Wilson gets the first down yardage, but the drive would stall, and Hilton Head Christian heads back to the low country with a 34-7 victory over Orangeburg Prep. Well, we had a big-time matchup in the shadows of the golf heaven. Heathwood Hall facing Augusta Christian. A pair of unbeatens going at it. Hilton, uh, Heathwood Hall in the red zone, but a fourth down stop by Jacob Thigpen keeps the Highlanders off the board. And the very next play, Augusta Christian's Terrence Vendiver Jr. is off to the races. That puts Augusta Christian up 28 to 3, and ACA goes on a knockoff Heathwood Hall 45 to 16. First loss of the season for the Highlanders. Unbeaten Hammond hosting Wilson Hall, former Skyhawks and current Gamecocks Alex Huntley and Jordan Birch in attendance. And this was all Hammond out of the gate. Jack Weston hands off to Cam Scott, who stretches out far enough to reach the end zone for the touchdown. Extra point good. Skyhawks up 7 0. Later, it's another Hammond touchdown. Caper Stokes finds a hole. He bursts through. Hammond is up 14-0. Later, it's Witt Muschamp. Last year, it was Jackson Muschamp at the controls. Jackson's now in Athens. And here's Witt dumping it off to Aiden Kanziter. And he is headed for the third touchdown of the night for Hammond. And Hammond goes on to win this one by a final of 47-7. The Ben Lippin Falcons looking for their first win of the season, hitting the road to face Lawrence Manning. First quarter, as the Swampcats take the field, and Ben Lippin with some defense. You know, their head coach is a defensive guy. Had to like that, Garrett Gamble with the sack. Now, same quarter, Lawrence Manning is driving. And the pass, though, is picked off by Ben Lippin's Graydon Davis. Nicely done. However, Ben Lippin could not be able to put up any points on that drive. Later, Lawrence Manning has the ball back, and it's Connor Smith with the big gain. And he won't score, but he's knocking on the door around the six-yard line, looks like it. And then Gabe Harris will take the direct snap and runs it in for the score. And Lawrence Manning goes on to win it by a final of 14 to nothing. Well, it's been an emotional week for the Spring Valley football team. Earlier this week, a beloved member of the Viking community passed away from COVID-19. Charles Peterson was a volunteer assistant for the Vikings. He was also an amateur scout for the St. Louis Cardinals. And back in the day, he was a shrine bowler at Lawrence High School before beginning a career in pro baseball. Charles Peterson was 46. Tonight, Chapin High School hosted the Lake Murray Jamboree. Coincidentally, Spring Valley faced Lawrence in this scrimmage. And that is the son of the late assistant coach, Trey Peterson, an outstanding defensive lineman for the Vikings. And there you see Trey warming up with his teammates. And before the game, they had a moment of silence for Trey's dad. You can see Trey and his teammates pausing for just a moment to honor the memory of Charles Peterson. Thank you. So obviously Trey had a lot going on in his mind tonight, but you know, you get out on that football field sometimes and it's maybe the best therapy for him. And check out Trey making some plays, putting pressure on the Lawrence quarterback. Spring Valley head coach Robin Bacon reflected on an emotional week. Following the death of someone who was a coach, a father, and who handed down a legacy that is now in the hands of his son, Trey. Yeah, and Trey's just such a great kid. I mean, that's the big thing for him. You know, this is, um, you know, his senior year. We're really excited about what kind of player he's going to be and what kind of kid he is. And, and just to be able to get out here and play is, is, is what it's worth. You know, Trey knows what he's got to do. And, you know, I told him, and Coach Moten, defensive uh, coordinator, uh, told him, said, you know, hey, Let's make this special. Let's celebrate them. And, and we got some stickers that we got. And I actually got these from Lauren. So we're going to put these on. It's got 
uh, Charles's number from Lawrence, and so uh, I thank my guys. I'm real good friends with those guys in Lawrence, but they gave us these stickers. It says CP7 uh, with a sticker on it. So we're gonna put those on our head, remind him, and and we're just gonna play this season for Charles. And there are the stickers that uh, Robin was referencing, and not only do they have CP7, but also KD. King Dixon, the former Gamecock Athletics Director who also played at USC, he passed away in July. He was an outstanding athlete at Lawrence High School. So two players, two athletes who once donned the Lawrence colors remembered by their alma mater. That was a, a nice tribute to uh, both Charles Peterson and King Dixon. Uh, final dress rehearsal for these teams as the regular season is set to begin next week. The Vikings get on the board. Dequandre Smith finds to Sean Osby. Nicely done. Breaks a tackle and he's in the end zone. Spring Valley would fall though, 10 to seven to Lawrence. Next week, the Vikings will open the season at Rock Hill. Hey, talk about a drive for five. The defending four-time state champion, Dutch Fork Silver Foxes with a final dress rehearsal. That's a new quarterback in town, Will Taylor, who transferred from Ben Lippin. This week, the Clemson commit for baseball picked up an offer from Dado Sweeney. So this guy has some options up there in Tiger Town. First drive of the scrimmage, he finds Devin Hyatt. His brother Jalen wore that number last year. He's now at Tennessee playing for the Vols, and Devin looking the part of a Division I prospect as he hauls that one in. And Dutch Fork in this scrimmage wins 31-7 over Ridgeview next week. The Silver Foxes will host White Knoll in the season opener as they go again. It's all about the drive for five for Dutch Fork.